Welcome to the Mesa Chamber of Commerce Inside Business Podcast. My name is Sally Harrison, and I am the President and CEO of the Mesa Chamber of Commerce. Today, we are in the University of Phoenix Podcast Studio, and joining me is Chamber member and good friend Joan Kruger from NAI Horizon. Thank you, Sally. Welcome. Thank you. It's so good to see you. Likewise. Like in person. But <laughs> but I guess nobody else knows that, right? Right. <laughs> well, today we're going to talk about your favorite subject, real estate. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yep. More specifically, commercial real estate. And a lot going on in that world right now. Yes. Yeah. So welcome to the show, Joan. Thank it's you. good to have you. And um, we're going to go ahead and get started because there's a lot to cover. We do have a lot yes. to discuss. Yes. Especially in the East Valley. Yes. Yeah. Oh my so, gosh, yes. So tell us a little bit about yourself and how long you've been in commercial real estate. Well, okay. Thank you. I'll start there. Uh, I'm in my 13th year of practicing real estate. I've been licensed for 15. Um, just before the Great Recession of 2008, a friend and I were starting to dabble in commercial real estate. And then I was working in the corporate world uh, doing international business development and sales and that went away yeah, in 2008. It would. Yeah. <laughs> so I decided that it was a good time after all those years to go out on my own, hang my own shingle. And um, since I'd been in sales for 12 to 15 years at that point, uh, I'd also been a member of Gilbert's Planning Commission and on their town council. I had a number of skill sets I thought would lend to this job. Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, I had learned zoning and it was a huge passion of mine, still is, if only I had known back when I was choosing a career that zoning was so much fun. Um, but I realized that I could do it better than a lot of my colleagues in sure. commercial real estate. Yeah. Um, um, there are lots of folks out there who know real estate and I am driven a lot by my knowledge of zoning and have helped a lot of clients that way. So anyway, so it was an easy transition for me um, and I had spent a lot of time um, doing contracts and sales. I was raised by a bunch of attorneys and <laughs> I've worked in a number of law firms. So the legal aspect of it sure. was very comfortable because uh, the state of Arizona gives real estate agents a little bit of a step up in that regard. And we mm -hmm. get to act like lawyers sometimes, which is oh, very empowering. <laughs> um, well, that's great. Yeah. Well, I'm sure being on town council probably lent itself to moving in this direction well and i i tell people that um that opportunity for me was life changing um it's yeah. um it, it teaches you all new skill sets you don't have <laughs> a choice sure. about learning them um and then just the um the exposure to different people different projects sure um while i had worked with c-level people in my corporate job um, the, the kind of people who, well, and we talked about these Valley and everything that's happening uh, here. Um, I, I remember m my very first, um, uh, my very first encounter with a developer was, we were talking about such a large deal that I, I couldn't even comprehend and, um, yeah. and immediately talked about um, how the community could work together. And I, they looked to me as if I really knew <laughs> what was going on but you have to get up to speed fast and yeah. um, of course it takes a few um, I know you're very fond of our old friend John McCain here yeah. and I met him on a couple of occasions and got to speak with him about what's happening in um, in the East Valley and so yeah it's I, I learned to overcome sure. a lot of fears and to um, take on a lot of projects that I might probably never have had the chance to do otherwise so well, tell us why now is a good time to share with small businesses how to look for commercial real estate. Well, we've got a lot of mixed news about the economy. Yes. Of course, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, um, I think I heard you say we, we thought that the clock would turn over to 2021 and yeah. things would miracu miraculously improve. Everybody was improve. hoping for that, right? Right. But it's really just the next day. Right. Uh, and so we're still working on a number of things um, to resolve themselves. Um, and we are still uh, hoping for um, things to kind of shake out. So on my way here this morning, talking about more updates about um, the vaccine and what that does, but 
um, we we have in commercial real estate a real belief that things are going to uh, in the next few months start changing um, quite a bit so the miss perception, if you will, uh, is that the pandemic in 2020 left a lot of vacancies in our retail and office worlds. And the truth of the matter is that the federal stimulus programs Mm -hmm. prevented that from happening. So uh, we have tenants who are being kept current and landlords who are being kept current on um, incomes and um, uh, rent payments, and so uh, we're we're still kind of struggling to figure out how this is going to shake out. We've had eviction moratoriums, mm-hmm. um, right. but in the meantime, what we've had is um, a lot of building that's going on. Right. And um, yeah, just drive around Mesa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, and in fact, I meant to tell you, Mesa Drive, I haven't been up here in a while. Mesa Drive <laughs> looks completely different. Yeah. It's lovely yeah. and um, still a lot of fun to try to get through yes, in rush but hour. But someday, yeah. someday it'll oh, be it's called really down. nice. Yeah. yeah, so there are a lot of things that are going on that are going to um, shape the, um, I think, 2021 in terms of commercial real estate. Um, We, uh, 2020 had a lot of land being purchased. Mm -hmm. And so uh, what is going to happen with that? Uh, In some cases, we still don't know. The cost of building is still a little high. And so we're waiting to see what happens with that if the cost of lumber starts stabilizing, um, that sort of thing. So um, we are going to find out what (laughs) things look like. But But we have great hopes for the second half of this year. Awesome. Well, what kind of properties can you assist our members and others to look for? Well, I actually, um, in commercial real estate, it's expected that uh, most of us are specializing in one property type or another, and I tend to specialize in the East Valley. Again, having started on the Planning Commission in Gilbert in 1999 Mm -hmm. and having worked on projects ever since, um, and now being very involved in um, East Southeast Mesa, um, th- I um, kind of do a little bit of everything. Um, industrial properties ha- were just as much on fire in 2020 as land was, and so those are harder to find, a little bit more expensive than we want them to be. But I love working with smaller, bu- small to medium businesses mm-hmm. uh, in both the retail office and um, industrial mm-hmm. um, property types. So I keep my eye on those the most and have a pretty good idea what's available, um, what the price points are, and um, how to help uh, your members find them. That's great, because we want you to help those <laughs> members <laughs> find them. Great. So is commercial real estate process different than looking for a house to buy or lease? Tremendously. Um, okay. Night and day. Talk about that. Yeah. Well, we, um, there are, well, in the first place, the residential real estate market has done a really good job at providing data um, both to the agents, but also to consumers. Mm-hmm. I mean, we have Zillow and Trulia, right. and we have all of these apps, and we have something similar in commercial real estate, but our consumers make the mistake of thinking that the commercial apps work the same way that the residential <laughs> apps do. So, and now we have such a technologically advanced consumer base that they just want it that way, and it mm-hmm. doesn't work in commercial real estate to rely on those consumer apps. There, This is still a process that has not evolved much over the many years, and um, it's, w- we, it's a very hands-on approach mm-hmm. with commercial. And so um, um, clients need to have some idea of where they're looking uh, um, in terms of what they need, and we'll take it from there and give them information. Um, but it isn't... It isn't readily available. Unfortunately, I get a lot of complaints about you know <laughs> us hiding information, and that's not really the case. It, sure. it, it, w- if we can turn that around and realize that the lack of information means that you can kind of build the scenario that you want mm-hmm. instead of buying a three-bedroom, two-bath house with a pool, <laughs> it's going to be a three-bedroom, two-bath house with a pool, but an office 
uh, with three offices, a conference room, and two restrooms doesn't necessarily stay that way. Sure. So that makes you don't sense. see pictures because it's going to look entirely different after you've said, well, I want it painted pink and I want it down to, I don't need the conference room. Can you make it a bullpen? And, um, you know, the same uh, thing is true for industrial and retail. So. Well, how can businesses help the process to be most effective for themselves? Well, first is to have some understanding of this process, understand mm -hmm. that it is different. If the um, client is lucky enough to have purchased a house before and know that process, wipe that memory out sure. of your brain and be open to understanding the new process and um, let the commercial real estate agent slash broker um, advise you on how this process works. It's gonna be unknown. Don't be wary. They're mm -hmm. not trying to pull any strings here sure. or, or mislead you in any way. It's just completely different. Um, the second is understand what the market looks like um, and be realistic about what you're looking for, where you're looking, uh, what you need, prices, be aware of the economy. Come out. If you're going to be an, um, if you're going to start dabbling in real estate, whether it's for your business uh, or for some other reason, you, you need to expand your horizon in terms of mm -hmm. understanding the entire economy. So be aware of what's going on around you, and and then have a plan. Don't say, well, maybe a little bit of this, or I could look over there, Glendale versus Queen Creek. Mm -hmm. you, have an understanding. Um, it's a fairly basic business concept. Understand what have a business plan. Should they should they spend a little time trying to figure out their financial piece of it too? Very <laughs> very much so. That seems like that would be important. Yes. So um, if they want to purchase property, it is in that way the same as buying a house. N know what you can afford. Right. Be pre-approved. Mm -hmm. Have talked to your um, your lender. Mm -hmm. um, if you're going to be leasing, then have some financial history. Um, your landlord is going to want to know that you're a good risk. And so, yes, have right. that's part of your business plan. Sure. Have your ducks in a row. It yeah. makes it easier to help you. Great. We have a couple more questions before Kay. we wrap up. Kay. How does the horizon, see, <laughs> see that there, look like? Uh, what does the horizon look like for commercial real estate? Well, certainly wish we all had a crystal ball. <laughs> I mean, that would just Be make helpful. our lives so much easier. Um, but I, I think, and again, the uh, economists and a lot of the pundits out there, uh, again, believe that the, the nation as a whole is going to start recovering. There's a lot of optimism that we're going to get through this. I think people are tired of being on hold. Uh, I think that businesses, once we can get some um, immunity going here, we can get businesses uh, back on track, and that will just automatically impact uh, commercial real estate. And again, 2020 started out, and we were going to have a bang up year. And Everybody all, thought it was right. Be like a little bit year of a hiccup lifetime. in 2021. <laughs> it was going to be great, and so who knows? But yeah. we do have a lot of optimism going forward. That's great. What advice do you have for commercial real estate investors? Well, the same thing is true. It's been very hard for investors to find income, solid income producing properties, mm -hmm. mostly because nobody's moving and nobody's going to tell you when they are. Sure. Because they don't know. Yeah. Um, we're we, there are just so many unknowns yet. And so I would tell investors, and I'm looking, I've got my eye open for several of them right now, just mm -hmm. be patient. Mm -hmm. This is going to come back and properties will turn over. Okay. Um, but you just have to keep your fingers crossed. Patience don't get is a patience virtue. It is a virtue. That's right. <laughs> well, so it sounds like you have a lot of enthusiasm. Tell us about, like, what's your favorite part of this job? Helping people? Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> well, oh, you're very, you're very sweet. Thank you. I, I enjoy watching uh, people's eyes light up. I, I imagine residential agents are the same um, when people walk into the space mm -hmm. and they just know mm -hmm. that this is where they can make their dreams come true. Sure. Um, and, uh, or, or even if it's just a financial uh, situation, because what people forget is that property owners, are, that is their business, making money off the real estate. So. Um, investors and uh, small businesses all when they know that this is going to help them achieve their goals mm -hmm. and I have I've nailed it 
Yeah. I found them the space. That's and awesome. Yeah, it's very exciting. That's a good feeling. Yes. Well, how can people get a hold of you? Well, you can reach me um, at NAI Horizon, and my email address is joan.kruger, K-R-U-E-G-E-R, first name Joan, at naihorizon.com, and my direct number is 602-393-6727. Awesome. I always answer my phone. And that's important because not everybody does. I, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, keep on doing that. <laughs> thank and you. keep having fun. Well, thank you. And yeah. thank you so much for having me. Well, this is thank great. Thank you for joining us uh, today on this edition of the Inside Business Podcast. You can find all of our episodes of the Inside Business Podcast at iTunes, Google Play, or your own favorite podcast website. You can also find them online at mesachamber.org. Thanks, Joan. Thank you. Yeah, good to Appreciate see you. Appreciate it. Have a great day. Thank you.